continue to be the priority for the Mad Lions in the bot lane, which will likely give the Lee Sin over to Canyon once again. And Isaiah, you said it, everyone on social media is saying it, Canyon is just smurfing in this yeah. series. Like, you might not see his impact, but if you go back and you do the second by second breakdown, you will see Canyon's impact in these Absolutely. games. Absolutely. And I mean, he's so much more than a kick flash, right? We've seen so many of those flashy plays. Ah, they kicked him in and they queued someone. Great. He is playing so aggressively in these team fights, and he walks that line so incredibly well between going too far, going just far enough. He's always pressuring Karzi so heavily. And alongside that, Khan will get his Jace ace and one on that in the LCK this summer. Absolutely dominant performance by him in his domestic region, and expectations are he can continue that pressure. Okay, counter argument. Tell me, Armut win rate on Wukong. I'm sure you know this, Medic. I don't know off the top of my head. He's undefeated domestically this year. He's really? only How ever many lost. Games has he he's only ever had one loss. I believe he's also nine and one. Question. Oh, okay. Uh, was to down one. <laughs> Medius, maybe you know the answer to this. Is down one in the LEC? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he has a very impressive record on the Wukong. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as I said, his only loss in the champion was to down one when they played it at yep. MSI earlier in the year. So um, it is something that he'll often use an answer to the Jace. And you can see that down was saying, let's prioritize the Jace. Let's get armor oh, off one of his comforts. Uh, and let's yep. try and put armor in an awkward position by going for the blind Jace. But then he actually gets a another one of his comforts in the form of the Wukong. But as you rightly said, Darmon rounding out their first half draft with a very strong top side. Yeah, I mean, their top side looks incredibly frightening. Ban on the Jarvan. So respect Alioya had an incredible early game. We'll see if he can replicate that on some other champion. Um, Zin is still available. You're expecting maybe that gets I banned out that. by Darmon next. And then it'll be interesting to see where he wants to go. If he wants to go for something early aggressive, if he wants to go more of a defensive pick like the Trundle, I think that Mad should just consider banning. Yes, Leona, exactly. Yeah. Uh, because I think that what Beryl has shown is that he, his engages have been great in the two games that we've seen. First game on the Rakan, second game on the Leona. If you give him a playmaker, you know that he can be impactful on it. Uh, and so why not just remove something like the Thresh as well? And then, oh, instead they're going to limit the Ezreal. Oh, so I like this. want to try and remove safety from the bot side of Damwon. Exactly. I think this is actually smarter, you know, because if you ban, if you ban like the Thresh or whatever, well, he could go Rel or he could go, he even did Shen support. Like he could find another pick. The Ezreal is the best champion for just leaving on an island and roaming elsewhere. And when I see these three picks from Damwon for top side, they do not want to lay yeah. by. They want to play topside. They want to fight you. Ziggs, though, is a really smart answer because it can do similar things. Yep. Can be used to push and play aggressively, but you can also AFK at the tower and clear waves. It's got great wave clear, and also I think one of the biggest things that I love about Ziggs is his ultimate. Yeah. And it kind of works in the same way that a GP ultimate does. Oh, you're trying to stack up a wave or threaten a side. Tough luck. I'm going to clear that instantly or at least get rid of most of the wave, and then I can keep pressuring elsewhere on the map. Exactly. And if you want to play through sides with a Jace, guess what's a good champion to hold mid? Clear out those waves. Very effective there, too. Gragas coming through from LEA. So he wants to go for early ganks, right? Now the question is, having seen the last game and having seen this pick, you know, can he still make it happen? Because Don Juan, the, the alarm bells oh, have got to be going off in your head, right? You've got to be knowing. I mean, the Gragas pick also implies that you want a AD mid laner because you're trying yeah. to get some of the AP threat. And Yasuo Rakan, Gragas Wukong, that's a wombo combo that the likes oh. of which aren't very often seen. But instead, Humanoid will turn to the victor. Don't get me wrong, uh, Humanoid is a very good victor. It's actually one of his staple go-tos alongside the Orianna as Beryl answers with a pike. Wow. Okay. Wow, so Beryl really pulling out all the stops today. He wants to be on Playmakers, and you know, we talk about roaming champions. <laughs> you talked about it as they were like, they don't want to play for bot. Oh, they really don't want to play for bot. <laughs> They're busy saying, hello, Ghost, uh, have fun. See you uh, in 30 minutes. We'll see you in 30 uh, minutes. You can be wave clear, uh, you know, when we need you. For now, we're a top side focused team, yeah. and Khan died far too much last game. His KDA took too much of a hit. <laughs> so Beryl is now his support this game, and we will look to rectify that in the top side of the match. And I'm really terrified for any any kind of combination of 2v2s, 3v3s up on the top side for Matt. That is going to be difficult for them. And you pick this Gragas, you want to get aggressive, you want to be able to make plays here, but I think it's a win, it's a winning 2v2 mid lane for, for Damwon, it's a mid, winning 2v2 top lane. It's going to be really tough to find the areas. I think that Mad Lions have drafted a lot more scaling. They've gotten a very strong team fight composition. 
obviously the big thing that you should be concerned about as a Mad Lions fan is down one have shown game one. Yeah. If you are too weak in the early game, they will dominate you in the early game. Game two, if you give them a good team fight comp, they will out team fight you. And it seems that Mad Lions have fully committed into the team fight style. They have excellent engage. They have very powerful scaling and they have a way to shut down one down. The problem they're going to have to navigate is can they get through this early to mid game? Because as you rightly said, their top side is incredibly strong. Once more into the breach for Mad Lions and Damwon Kia. Damwon looking to continue their undefeated streak here at Worlds. Looking to go 9-0, following in the footsteps of T1 before them. And looking to do something only ever done by T1 as well, win two World Championships. Of course, T1 as SKT got three, but Damwon very much on their way to establishing their own dynasty as the new Korean kings. This is interesting. Canyon's actually going to start a pink ward here. So I do think this is an adaptation to El Yoya last game, how he got so many ganks out early. He really dominated the early game, starting with that pink ward. At least he can get away without going refillable or three pot. Yeah. That's going to give you some extra safety. They even have a lane ward there on top side. I do think once the lanes start, he's going to probably put that pink in, in pixel in the river. Just try to really make sure that con can stay safe in the 1v1. For the moment, just... Uh vision wards across the map no team really making any forays into the enemy jungle and i think once again we'll watch elioya and canyon both of them very influential in the last game elioya through the early game it's the featured matchup presented by mercedes-benz khan and canyon may look for they're gonna be or, or they're gonna try to find arma but i mean this late you got to be going for something oh, didn't see them <gasps> oh that fog of war just coming in clutch, but now they will be spotted. Here we are, the 2v2. Shock bus goes wide. And the start with the W starts. Sonic Wave coming out as well. Canyon Force back. And Leo is having to try and retreat back towards his tower. Will heal up once again. They know that they're stronger in the 2v2. Azel talks so much about it in the draft, where the entire top side, their ability to skirmish, and if you try to fight them, you just know they're going to be terrifying. And so they try to leverage that. They force El Yoya behind, or at the very least, they were going to try and steal away his blue buff, uh, and they will put him a little bit behind. Now, Canyon will have to do a leash to start. This will force his smite out from the red buff, and I think that El Yoya, for the time being, should be safe. But already, you can see the aggression that Dom One is trying to leverage in the early game. Yeah, but honestly, didn't didn't work out too bad for Matt whatsoever. You know, they they are able to just start on wolves. This is Elio, you're doing something really smart. You know, too often you see people try to overcommit to getting that first buff, and you'll just get poked off it. Armut also got the early level too. Great trade up here onto Khan, who's already had to put two potions. You can see why Dan One do want it, did want to uh, try and make that play though, because Elioya in game two got such a strong early lead Ooh, on the half. That was a really gold head at the 15, and yeah, eight, eight kills and assists at 15 minutes. He was very much on form, even if Mad weren't able to bring it home. Bone Skew is going to land there, but Kaiser can just dance his way away. You're a bit of a Pike and Rakan aficionado. I'm really bad at Pike, but I like playing well, it. Well, what are your thoughts? Do you like it this so matchup? Pike, Pike into Rakan is an interesting one because whenever the Rakan dances back to his AD carry, it's actually really easy to hit the Bone Skewer. Oh. The issue becomes, though, Rakan's never going to jump on the Pike because he can just E away, and Pike's never going to be able to get the second start on the Rakan because he can just E away. So the Bone Skewer is the only real difference between So them. really, that matchup is They're more going outside to other lanes. the lane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed as well, Showmaker's playing Predator Syndra. So oh, they're geez. actually playing double Predator here. Oh, so Armut's dying. They're looking to roam. Is. Armut's definitely dying. Canyon here. TP available for Humanoid, but once again, it's Canyon and Khan teaming up in the early game. It's the Darm One show, and Armut's just a player in it. Canyon looking for the damage, safeguards in. We'll have to flash the final tower shot, but both of them get out alive. Very cleanly done from Darm One. Really good shot glass that came out from Khan as well just mm -hmm. prior to the dive, just to chip that extra bit of HP off of armor. And it's Darmon saying, hey, remember us? We know what you did to our top lane <laughs> the last game. This is a bit of revenge. This will give a window for Alyoya to steal some camps, but Ghost and Showmaker in a position to answer, he's going to be forced back. Just great play across the map from Darmon already. Yeah, just getting out here to defend, because that was really the only thing going bad for them. And Khan now taking a really good trade onto Armut. And taking a bad trade like that, again, this is similar to game one where he had to go back at such a poor goal timing. He didn't actually get potions. And then you just TP oh. back and Kenny's you were that smite. low. Watch this special delivery. Kanye didn't even need to smite it. Oh, <laughs> word. That's just not fair, is it? <laughs> Beautifully done by Showmaker there, leveraging the W to steal away the blue buff and handing it over to his jungler. Canyon only level three, but already off to a great start. Yep, barrel. 
buys the boots, first base here. He's out on the map. He's got the Predator ready. I'm going to be curious to see when Showmaker gets it. I am expecting him to just grab, you know, maybe an early tier two boots and start moving around. The Predator is, is not something I can say I've, I think I've ever seen on Syndra. Uh, it is a champion that does have pretty effective moves, but generally, you know, if he thinks it's just going to be Wait, a farm lane. Armour has flash. Armour has no flash. Khan decides against investing for it. Bell with the bone skewer got the stun onto Kazi here. Kazi still has flash heal. We'll try and get away with the heal through the ignite. It's just not enough. Kazi down. Humanoid now joins the fray in the bottom lane. Armour, as you said, Betty, a couple of seconds too early, but he is dead in the top side. Elio looking for the gank here, as he does have flash and has the body slam. Canyon on his way up. Kaiser on his way there oh. as well. Khan able to dodge to the side of the body slam, but Kaiser will get the knock up, and Khan will fall before Canyon can get there. Canyon in the end arrives as Elio tries to flash away. Kaiser body blocking the sonic wave. Canyon doesn't quite have the damage to take down that with Khan. Yeah, but his nice showmaker, flash, scatter, down goes Elioia. The Predator, when well, he's got it, didn't use it, of course, because he hasn't got the boots, but we'll pretend it impacted that play. <laughs> yeah, if you really think hard enough, you just run faster. So, Armut in a really rough spot here already. Man, they took game two personally, didn't they? With how much they're focusing on. The thing, the, the thing about the Gragas pick is it just doesn't have the same early agency that something yeah, like a Jarvan fight. does. And and Darmon know this. They drafted a very strong top side very early on in the draft to be able specifically to fight around this top side, and they're doing just that. The awkward position here for Armor is he's a level down. He takes a huge trade, and Khan, knowing that he has flash, is just waiting for cooldowns and is able to punish him. Just such a great play from Khan, and really the, the jungle has set him up for success early, and now he can do the rest with the lead that he has. Absolutely, and then this is just a really nice sidestep there with the accelerated gate. Able to dodge that, but obviously it was always going to go down. And on, when you called out that he was going to get killed, he honestly could have gotten the kill, but yeah. he was just playing with respect to where Elioia was. Wanted to wait for the cooldowns, wanted to be a sure thing. And Arma, unfortunately, gets caught recalling on a ward. And that is why you've got to pay so much attention uh, to where those wards could be, where they're getting placed. Because he could have just backed it up fully and probably gotten out scot free. And we didn't even talk about Kazi dying as well. Right, yeah. like the fact that Ghost and Beryl were still in the lane. Ka Kaiser was out roaming with the rest of the team while he was moving with Elioia, which means that he ended up losing his life. Humanoid also TP'd to bot lane, and he doesn't get anything for the back of it as well. So now you find Darmon with a 1.5k gold lead only seven minutes in. And that is actually one of the things Pikes gives you that Rakan doesn't, is the follow up after someone flashes away from you. Showmaker, though, caught out here in the mid lane. Chaos Storm will be enough. It ticks him down. Humanoid takes the kill. Nicely done by Matt, getting a play there towards mid. And I was just going to say how he goes through the early Merc Treads because it is AP jungle mid. But even that, not keeping him safe as they have the extra man, Kaiser arrives. And they're able to get that kill, but they've got to keep Arma in this game. And it's just looking so bad I mean, for him. Arma's dead as he went in with a cycle, and he is just about able to walk away from this one. But Canyon is waiting in the wings, and I don't think Mad Lions knew. Shock Blast hits on the Kaiser six. Canyon, as you say, has the six. Dragon's Rage, Kaiser's out of range of any sort of battle dance. Bevel, <laughs> excuse me, sir, that's a chaos if I've ever seen I walked all the way up here and I'm getting my gold. Yeah, he's like, well, it's either I take the kill or I get no assist. I mean, we both know, you know, <laughs> you know that's what, I mean? what Pike's for, right? You take the kills, other people get the gold. And now Darwin know that they have the numbers advantage, so immediately they move into the top side of Mad's jungle and they're- Well, they want to dive this. Here comes Showmaker. They definitely do. Rakan reads the play. Humanoid doesn't have teleport. Elioia has got no flash, no explosive cast. And handing the blue over as well. It's just everything going in the favor of Darmon. 2000 is the gold lead. Elioia is not even level six yet. And Canyon continues to just steal away camp. This is something Darmon do so, so well though. Whenever they get a lead in top or in the mid lane, they just constantly get Canyon into the enemy jungle. They take away camps. Humanoid just survives in the mid lane. But they they just denied Blue and Gromp away from Elioia. As you say, Betty, he's still only level five and he's three whole camps behind. And this is the problem when, it was similar to what happened in game one, where they went with the Graves Oriana. If you draft for 2v2s that cannot fight Dom One, Dom One will push that to the absolute limit. They will be in your face. They did it at level one, they're doing it now, they're going for a top side, and then you have to play 
from behind against someone, which is so tough, even if you have good scaling. It, it's one of those things where often we as casters will always talk about like, okay, in a perfect world, in the draft, this is what you expect. Yeah. Dom one is one of the few teams where like, regardless of what draft they get, you feel like that they're always going to be able to execute upon it. And uh, it's just such a great representation of like, what a great early game comp can do when it's executed upon well. And like, there are certain things that you're allowed to do and Dom one's like, we know what we're allowed and not allowed to do. Yeah. And we're going to show you exactly that. And I mean, it, it shows you what it takes to be a world champion in League of Legends. They are so flexible. They execute to the highest degree with a variety of different comps and you know really are able to play a lot of different styles but we are potentially finding a kill on top side armor going in with the cyclone khan's gonna knock him back armor flashes but the wukong just doesn't do enough damage yeah. with only a sheen damwon though able to back away in the mid lane as well elioya couldn't find the engage with an explosive cast and back goes to worse because now it's time to farm plates for jace he's gonna be able to recall and he will have his mythic completed, I'm almost certain, off of this base. So that was really the last chance Arma had to do anything in the 1v1. Yes, he was just on the sheen, but at least Khan hadn't completed an item. And, well, we'll see if he does now. You can see how close Arma was and how this matchup typically does go. But the problem for Arma is he's just taken one too many bad trades early on. There's been so much attention yeah. thrown up towards the top side. He hasn't been given an opportunity to convert this matchup into a way in which he can start swinging it in his favor. And now down one, they're not going to slow down. The wave, in the, bot lane. the wave is actually in such a good position here for Kazi. Mend the barrel had to force the skewer out a little bit earlier because Kazi could back away behind the wave. And now Mad Lions can try and turn it back around. Barrel still has flash here. Kaiser, no flash. Skewer comes out. Kaiser tries to stop him. The ghost gets caught up. And with the bullet time, that's enough damage. But Dom one Kia, four members strong now in the bottom lane, starts to back away. Humanoid up towards the top side is fighting, and Khan will fall to armor. Mad Lions start to turn this one around. Showmaker flashes away. Canyon kills off Elioyo as well. Wow, I can't believe that Canyon was able to snipe that one off the back as well. Ends up being a two for one in favor of Mad, and everyone TP'd towards the bot lane. That is the most people that Kazi and Ghost have seen in the last two games <laughs> show up in their lane. Another TP now going to be invested for Ghost in the bot side. Armut needs to be careful. He doesn't have his ultimate available. But Darmon still find themselves with a gold lead, even though Mad get themselves a couple kills. And credit to Humanoid. It felt like he got so much done on that play. Utilizing the gravity field, his ultimate, his spells, actually zone out both the soul laners there from Damwon. He did a lot of the heavy lifting here on the damage. And to me, this looks like a flash prediction. He's expecting Karzi to flash when the animation comes through. Karzi has the read, though, plays it very well. And then Kaiser on point here. The flash coming out from Ghost, but he predicts it right into the MF faulty, and then all hell breaks loose. Everyone TPing in, but look at Humanoid getting so much done on both Khan and Showmaker. That's a really good observation there. Oh, another engage. There's the quickness. Ghost caught up in it. The charm comes out, and Ghost will fall. One more auto from Kazi is enough. Now, that's a pretty big pick for Matt because Ghost Arma. has just invested his TP. Uh, Canyon does have the Herald, so he's going to drop that one top, and it's just a simple cross map. Damwon going to continue investing money into Khan, as you would very much expect. Meanwhile, Matt trying to get something back on the bot side, but it's only going to be a couple plates, uh, as they're not going to be able to take this tower down. And I think that Matt is saying, let's try and stop the second tower siege that could very well come out from Damwon. At the very least, it's signs of life for Matt, because yeah. this was looking like it could have just been an absolute stomp. They were behind in gold across the map and now they've had a couple of effective plays uh, in a row on that bot side you know Karzi has done his mythic he's to a pretty strong point here he's up in farm he's getting some tower plates denying some farm from ghost so they at least have a win condition now they have something that they can try to play through Darmok here continuing to try to deny that Kaiser locked up here able to jump away but has to flash the Walker's Canyon is well on his way to that mid lane. Rift Held used in the mid lane as well. They didn't use it top. Instead, they get three more plates out of that mid lane turret. That's how you maximize plates right there. Very well done once again from Darmon, trying Ooh. to get as much money into their back pocket as they can. You can see quite the significant gap uh, developing between the top and jungle in favor yes. of Darmon. But if you hold your finger over that and don't look hey, at it, the rest of the map. then Humanoid and Karzi are both up All in right. gold. Yeah, see, you. You're becoming more European every game, Azale. I like your way of thinking. I'm here for like a month, you know, I've got to adapt. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Drake is up, and once again, we're seeing a very low priority on these early Drakes. Uh, there was a window where Mad could have committed to that objective, but again, they were concerned about that top tier 2 going down, so both El Yoya and Kaiser went back to base, pathed up towards top to cover for that potential continued siege from Darmon. 
For the moment, all's quiet on Summoner's Rift as both teams are reset. Because that low dragon priority, we're not getting as many early fights as perhaps we usually would. Although we do have 12 kills in 14 minutes, so we're going on at a rare right old clip. Showmaker, though, going to be able to get some more damage on that mid lane tower Ooh. as Darmwon actually going to start up this dragon. Sorry, I just noticed that... Humanoid has two levels on Showmaker right now. It's oh, but hit. Kaiser doesn't have any levels. He's back in the fountain. Uh, Beryl will take the kill. And that's the lockup you can do to Rakan. So this is something we haven't talked about. Mad face check. You kind of rely on El Joya a little bit, but he's going AP Gragas. Kind of the problem with Rakan is he is quite squishy. And one of the advantages he has is his mobility, which you'd sit there and say, OK, great. Uh, but against a comp like this, especially against the Pike, it's actually very easy to punish that squishiness and lock him down long enough for him to not be able to leverage his high mobility. And it's a very high volatility game on both sides, right? It's difficult to play those types of compositions from behind because the inverse could be happening. You know, if it was Dom one face checking in with a Pike and with the Ziggs, you know, we'd be saying the same things here uh, for Kaiser, but the, playing towards his spot side. Well, it's time to clear out the wave. <laughs> Humanoid though caught out Showmaker, there's the kick back and Humanoid has to flash. Tries to get to the gravity well but just can't do it in time. Kazi will get the final auto attack off here. Flashes oh. underneath the towers, he tries to turn it back onto Canyon. Uses the Gore Drinker for a little bit of a heal. Beryl and goes to here to join the fray. Double up, not quite enough damage. Canyon able to walk away wounded from this one as Kazi will fall. And Beryl goes on a killing spree. And Darwin just have a numbers advantage in the bot side of the map. Every time you see that fight continuing to extend, you're thinking, surely someone from Mad will show up, but they just don't. Four versus two. Mad end up getting one kill. Canyon gets away with barely any HP and Dam one secure two along with another tower and suddenly the gold gap is continuing to balloon once again. This is, I, I thought Sooning didn't even make worlds but here they are <laughs> once again. It's the one AD fun. carry flank. Karzi with the Omfong replay there. We can see this in the Axe replay and just really trying to trying to make something happen. And I think he played this out very well. So close to actually knocking down Canyon. If he gets that kill... Smite, I think, as well, mitigates so much of the damage coming out from Kazi. Safeguard. Safeguard shield's just enough. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, playing it out very well, but he does at least get the kill on Showmaker. You, know, you highlighted the level lead for Humanoid. Unfortunately, that has been That's largely gone. eliminated <laughs> now as Humanoid has died, and a lot of farm was picked up there by Showmaker. Dom one. Looking for another Herald here and looking to just continue to push this game forward. And this is the thing that Dom won't do so well, though. Take an inch and turn it into a mile. Yeah. Every single mistake you make gets turned, compounds into more and more and more and more. And now you can see 4,000 gold ahead at the 16 minimum. And Herald is even scarier against six teams because really you just need Herald Charge plus a Satchel, Tower's dead. Yep. Becomes very hard to defend any of your turrets. Becomes very hard for Mad Lions to find a way back into this game. They'll be looking for picks. They'll be looking for part of their Wombo combo to connect. But Darmwon have just constantly been finding these catches in the side lane. Uh, the good news for Mad is that there's a lot of standing gold with all these towers still up and available. The bad news is... They can't get to it. You can't get to it, yeah. <laughs> you kind of have to go through down one to get to those towers. Um, typically, though, as you get to this point in the map, you end up seeing a lot of trade. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Mad like, hey, we'll give up second Drake in order to get maybe a tier one in the top lane to get a little bit more gold into our back pocket rather than gamble that fight, you know? So um, there are ways in which they can look. And you can see it right now, right? They're slowly pathing up towards top. They are pinging that top tier one. Uh, so you can see Mad looking to try and at least take down some of these turrets to get a little bit more into their back pocket. And, fa and thankfully, there weren't any early dragons taken right so it's, it's not as though Damwon is, is pushing an early soul here their second dragon will be taking around 20 minutes so mad do have time but they have got to stop dying they have got to secure their farm play this slow if you can keep this gold disadvantage similar in 10 15 minutes well hey maybe you got a shot but it's very difficult to stop you can look for catches like this as Khan tries to flash away Cyclone will get the knock up explosive cast knocks him back Khan into the bush and immediately down as Armut will take the kill in that 2v1. So a little bit more gold for Armut, and it was definitely needed there, but <laughs> Damwon, they have a wave pushing top. Canyon also has the Herald. And again, it kind of comes back to what we were talking about, a trade elsewhere on the map. Humanoid, he does have good wave clear. Let's see if he can stop the siege coming out from Damwon. TP popped by Damwon as they look to push for this tier two. Kaiser looking for the longest flank. You have seen today, he's going all the way around, playing Ring Around the Rosies with that blue buff. Showmaker looking for the stun, though. And Kaiser's nowhere near this. Humanoid caught out, Damon Kia pushing in with the Rift Herald. Kaiser now steps across a ward, doesn't know it, as the Rift Herald's cleared out with a bullet time. And Beryl onto Kaiser, jumps away, pulled back with a bone skewer, but there's no follow-up. No Phantom Undertow. Beryl gets onto the Blast Cone there with a good death marks the spot, but won't be able to do anything more as uh, 
Darmwon are able to retreat through this blue side jungle. Yeah, Kaizo looking for the long flank, but with Arma not having his ultimate, there's not really any TP angle. There's not really a play to be had there. And just showcasing the power of Ziggs plus Herald, knocking down those towers, extending the gold lead here. Now up around 6,000 as Damwon are on series point and are looking to continue what has been an incredible run. 6-0 through the group stage, the only undefeated team, and then 2-0 as well so far here in quarterfinals. And you just look at it and you have to hark back to SKT, to T1, right? Mm -hmm. The only team to get to finals undefeated up until now. And if Darmon win this, they play up against T1 in the semifinals. And you have to feel it's almost a passing of the torch moment. If Darmon are able to win, they would defeat T1, the only team to win more than one world championship. Uh, the only team to win two in a row, sorry. And they would be looking to make it two in a row for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Looking for that second title. I mean, obviously incredible players. You're trying to secure themselves. That spot in League of Legends history. You know, flashes away from the scatter of the week. Kaiser oh, looking for the engage. Okay, Storm Stormkaiser going in with a quickness, but he only catches onto Canyon as Showmaker is able to flash away. Khan now joins the fray. Beryl looking at those health bars hungrily. Death from below could mark the end of Mad Lion's game. Humanoid, Bone Skewer, no flash into the Phantom Undertow. And the death from below as X marks the spot. And X marks Humanoid's death. A great kick from Canyon as Ghost gets the second. Mad Lions are routed. Mad Lions are running for the hills. But Darmwon Kia will not give them an inch. Darmwon is just playing these fights so beautifully. It's so difficult to engage on that comp with Syndra, with Pike, with Ziggs. They just make your life so difficult and they're looking to de completely destroy the Mad Lions. Bell misses the death from below. Bell will get the final auto attack. Dominating now on this Pike. Armor going in. Bell no mana, but he's got just enough health with the Ghost Water Dive to get out. It's an ace for Dom One. 10,000 gold their lead. Bad goes to worse there for the Bad Lions. They get erased. They'll lose the dragon. Uh, multiple kills with the Pike Ultimate as well, which is doubling up on that gold, putting them so far ahead. And Canyon has just looked on another level today. Has been incredible across three straight Lee Sin games. You just cannot stop this guy. You certainly cannot. You know, we, we've seen why that champion is considered so powerful in the current meta, but in the hands of a skilled Lee Sin player, you know that Canyon's already thinking about his next skin with a performance like this. Let's have a look back and you can see Humanoid with no flash gets locked up. And this is the second part of the fight where Darmwon go for the re-engage. But prior to this, Mad actually looked like they were in a pretty good position to get a fight, yeah. but it was so difficult for them to close the gap. And the awareness there from Canyon as well, with the kick in, with the sidestep onto everything, just such a great execution from Darmon once again. And I think one of the problems here is with Matt's comp, you want to be able to come from multiple angles, right? You want the Rakan flanking from one side, you know, pushing you in to Armut's flank coming from the other side. And even though Matt did have position on the dragon, there's so much poke, there's so much zone control on the Damwon side. Matt just could not close the gap to get the fight. And now here we are, 22 minutes in. They're starting the Baron. Matt have got no choice but to try to stop this. Not the quickest Baron in the world. Of course, Ziggs doesn't output as much damage as an AD carry would at this point, but it's already down to 7,000 armor. Now looking for that flank, looking for that pincer maneuver. Kaiser has the quickness, doesn't have a flash. Here comes Armut onto the back line with the Cyclone, a possibility, gets two knocked up. Kazi coming in as well with a bullet time and there's one. Mad Lions have found a fight around the Baron. They found the fight they were looking for. They managed to get the pincers. They managed to get the kills. Kazi they can get them all. Out, and they could get them all. Mad Lions fight back, breathe life into Europe as they clean up Darmwon. And, 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 and just like that, Mad find themselves with a team fight win and they can actually just go for the Baron here. Canyon is still alive and that risk of a smite steal is very real, but a number of shutdowns just went into the back pocket of Matt. That 10k gold lead went to a 6k gold lead. It's gonna get even lower, but Canyon still lives. Just how big is the gap between Darmon and Mad Lions? Canyon might decide it as he looks for this smite steal, but it's already down to 4,000. Here comes the TP as Darmon investing resources into this. Baron will be smited, and the Oya will secure it. Showmaker comes in, dodges away from Kaiser. He's gonna die the again. Damage coming down on Showmaker. Good out of the week, but now they're in a 2v5. Mad Lions are collapsing, but now the TP's rain in. Four members of Darmon immediately react. Ghost, Beryl, and Khan are here, and Armut might just be sacrificed. And the Oya, no explosive card for him. Armor pulled back. Armor taken down. Barrel gets him as Humanoid puts the damage down across the wall, but Canyon with a smite will heal himself back up. 
Wow. So, Mad walk away with the Baron. Darmwan is sitting there saying, okay, you shouldn't have gotten away with that. <laughs> that was not allowed. They invest a bunch of their TPs to re-engage. And again, you can see how slippery this Darmwan composition is and how difficult they actually are to lock down. Uh, but they're able to get one kill back on Arma. But let's have a look back at this fight. Yeah, and so much of it is just about this flank uh, from Arma. They're able to actually sneak around the backside there of the Baron Pit, finds the ultimate coming through. And then Karzi coming from an unexpected angle here. This MF ulti just absolutely roasts Showmaker and gets Ghost very low. And then Kazi commits onto Barrel because he's like, that's a lot of gold and that's 900 into my back pocket. And then you have this incredible collapse. Look, another 600 gold onto Kazi as well. 1.5k off of two kills should very uh, bring him, well, to an infinity edge. Wow. <laughs> that was a lot of money put into his back pocket. And that's quite the drop. Look, a canyon. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit misleading, though, because the top the of the graph is, is still 4,400. Yeah, it's true, that's true. <laughs> that's an EU graph right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not uh, an LCK graph figure. Yeah, Baron remains for Mad Lions for a minute and 20 seconds. This Red Bull Baron power play. We'll see what they can do with it, but really unable to push any further forward. Barrel able to dodge away from the Mad Lions. As Khan is going to join the rest of Darm 1 here as they look to defend their mid tier 1. So, is that, I have a question for you because you play a lot of top lane, right? Yeah. So, do you think at this point Armut can kill the Jason inside 1v1 or do you think it's still a little longer? I, I think he can. I think there's, there's always that possibility. I mean, it's, you're just on such a strong two items. If Khan can actually disengage and, and kite it out, you obviously will win. But if Armut can, can find him face checking a brush or, or find the right angle, there is a possibility to win that. You're the Hang same on. level and you have really powerful two items. Armut doesn't have Baron and Beryl's like, hey, this could be a potential pick for us. But no, Armut recognizes it is going to disengage. But yeah, that's kind of one of the things that I was thinking of now because when you have this huge influx of gold into your back pocket, you suddenly realize, oh, hang on. Yeah. We are suddenly so much stronger. Getting that extra item suddenly changes a lot Kaiser. of matchups. In with the quickness and perhaps down with the quickness goes Ghost. Kaiser, though, will fall. One for one trade so far. Beryl looking for the hooks over the wall but can't land them. Baron remains for 20 seconds as Mad look for a tier two in the mid lane for Beryl and Showmaker in prime position to make this one hurt for the Mad Lions. There's one looking for two as Alioya flashes away. Showmaker just needs a single sphere to chunk out the A uh, the jungler of Mad Lions. The chase continues here. Beryl just needs a skewer. Alioya will be spotted. Beryl goes in. Ignite and Alioya tick 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 down as Beryl takes another kill. Humanoid will get him in response. But that's Flash Ignite just to actually trade a kill there. Mad are trading up in a lot of these circumstances. You know, Kaiser going in, trading his life uh, for that of Ghost. Now mad, they have the opportunity to actually challenge here at the Dragon because Armut still has Flash ulti. Yep, and look, Armut, his ult is about to come up very soon. He's level 15 on this Victor, and Kaiser has joined the fray as well. Six on the way back. No teleport available for Khan, even though he's about to come back alive. This is going to be a tense fight. Showmaker waiting in the wings. Kaiser going in. Ghost, of course, has the Mega Inferno bomb, and it lands on Humanoid and Kaiser. Cannon going onto Armut down towards the bottom side is DK. Look for the fight. Darmon continue to push forward. Showmaker forced away. It's Chase, though. Kicked away, and here Khan! comes Khan! And what a better way to find the picks than with a flank TP. Uh, first for the flank running, sorry, from Khan. Bullet time used as well. Armut pushed up, up, forced up to the top side. Ghost gets one. Kazi next on the menu here for Barrel, but he just can't get the damage down. The dragon goes over to dumb one, and Mad Lions get a couple of kills. Why won't Canyon die? Is it, like, <laughs> is it just a law that he's just not allowed? Like, 2, 0, and 14. The grace and patience that Don Juan played with that. It does end up being 2 for 2 overall, but the crucial thing was Khan was able to get back so yeah. quickly, thanks to the speed gate and also the uh, the, the bonus Ghost movement. Ghost as well. Yeah, so quick, just, I thought it was a TP. Yeah, so he's just, look at how quickly he's able to rejoin the fight. And the thing is, Don Juan know the longer this fight goes, the better it is for them. They have good poke themselves. They know that their teammates are rejoining. Pike is also going to get back to the fight very quickly. And then this damage comes out from Khan. Mad Lions are not expecting it. They think that they can stall. They can't, they fall short, but then Darmon overcommits, thinking that they can just get a huge team fight with it. Did it die to the hex mine? It no did! Way. It died to the hex mine! <laughs> oh my god! And the bullet time was still hitting. That is an LCK <laughs> dragon! No. Might have the U graphic, but. Oh my word. Oh man. I but... thought it was only Cloud Drakes that liked the LCK. <laughs> Well, you got to give credit to, to both Humanoid and Karzi, though. They've been playing these fights well. I think Humanoid has been doing an incredible job actually zoning Showmaker, utilizing the ultimates and the lasers. And Karzi, 
he he can carry fights if you can keep him alive you can keep him safe that is difficult to do with no summoners on him and flash available on canyon but man he is strong at this point that's ie that's four items 80 percent crit and and we talked about mad actually having really good scaling during the draft canyon though he wants this canyon has has flash he could find this angle on karzi here if he goes too far forward Ooh. as you said is there no summoners on karzi can't force back behind his tower in the bottom lane. But I kind of want to come back to this team fight point because the thing about Darwin's comp is it is very focused on the early game, but the reality is that when you have an AD carry, you're just going to have that much more late game damage. Like, no one can hit like Kazi can in the late yeah. game. He is just going to have the type of TPS that you can't match. Uh, so I think that Darwin, by floundering a lot of these fights, may find themselves in a bit of an awkward position moving forward. And it may be the reverse of what happened in game two. It just comes down to execution of the fights. No, I, I agree, absolutely. And, and Pike is one of those champions that you can have the incredible fight, but you can also just get CC'd by Rakan and die instantly, right? You know, and that is actually where a tremendous amount of their kills are. He has nine kills here on the Pike. Showmaker did not create really any sort of early advantage. It was about the roaming, it was about the moves. If Don won't go back to Baron, there is a very real world where Mad just kill you at the Baron again, and all of a sudden the game's pretty much even. I can't believe Kazi just based there. Uh, if, if that was me, I would have been like, they might be starting Baron, they might be trying to force it, but I think that Mad recognized that top was pushed in, bot was pushed in, and then there was a real risk of getting into a team fight against this comp from Mad, and then a TP onto one of the sides, like, it could have been very disastrous for Diamond. So they said, you know what, we'll clear out the vision, we'll move back uh, to... Uh, clear up our sides, and then we can start training the Baron once more. And the stopwatch is actually such a big buy. Yeah, you know, is. Being able to immune a Syndra ult, being able to immune a Pike ult that denies the reset, that kind of thing is so massive, especially when you're playing without your flash. So Karzi placing a lot of importance on it. Speaking of stopwatches, we have to do our stopwatch check. Can Who's got a timepiece? Khan, stopwatch, Zonya's showmaker. So remember we said that this comp is very difficult to engage on? Now they have three Slightly stalling <laughs> tools at their disposal as well. Meanwhile, you don't actually have any stopwatches outside of the one that sits on top of Kazi. Kaiser, he has the ability to get out of there. But uh, yeah, even though there is a 5k gold lead, I really think that it's a bit disingenuous to the state of the game right now. Yeah. I think that in the top lane, obviously, you can see where the discrepancy is, but now it's Armut with level 16. We literally flipped game mm -hmm. two in this situation. Uh, and But in particular, it's the fact that I think that, as you rightly said, a lot of the gold lead is sitting on Beryl. Yeah. The gap between him and Kaiser is probably where you're seeing so much of this gold gap. Absolutely. And I mean, the fact of the matter is, not only is it Karzi that's going to be outputting a lot more DPS than, than Ghost in most cases, Humanoid as well. I mean, Humanoid is massive now at this point. He has the death cap completed on the victor. Late game has arrived. And it gets very difficult as the Syndra to actually deal with these long range lasers. You just drop the ulti, click it on the Syndra. He has to walk out of the fight. 30 seconds for Infernal Soul for Darm One. Mad Lions, 30 seconds before the fight that might decide whether or not you continue in Worlds, whether or not you get another shot, another bite at the cherry. That is this Darm One Kia lineup so far undefeated. 8 and 0 oh at Worlds 2021. Mad Lions here. Standing firm, battle lines drawn in the river as Darmon continue to advance. Armor not with the team. Elioia low, already chunked out. Redemption's gonna come down and they're gonna eat the honey fruit to try and heal themselves up. Armor looking for the flank, but the wards are there for Darmon. Canyon in prime oh, position. Scary, Sonic man. wave on Kazi. As you say, be scared of the darkness, because there lies Canyon. There be dragons. Darm one. Looking for the hook as Beryl. Unable to get onto Armour, but Armour's just stunned up and Khan dived in. Armour's popped the Cyclone, popped the Flash, and tried to get out of there. Mad Lion's going to start up the Infernal. Beryl able to get away down towards the bottom side of the fight. Mad Lions are, have been able to secure the dragon. They stopped the soul. But can they get out? But for it, they lose Armour. Look at the damage from the Chaos Storm. Humanoid injecting a little chaos into our veins this game as he forces Ghost and Khan away. But Mad Lions are on the wrong side of the rift. Well, they do have a wave in mid as well. If they want, they can actually threaten to push this. Don't I think they're concerned Baron. about the TP. Yeah, now Armour does have TP for 30 seconds left on it. Kazi will take down the tower and here comes the TP. Armour not alive. 30 seconds make or break here for the Mad Lions as they push forward towards the Baron. Canyon's gonna start it up. It's slow still, but quicker than it was before. Oh, and Showmaker. it's slower still because Canyon's not doing it. And it's Showmaker waiting in the wings with Beryl for the assist. Ghost secures the kill. And now Elioia is dead. Mad Lions 
What can you do without your jungler, without your top laner? What can you do in this situation? But watch as down one secure the Baron. But Armut is up. I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't stay around. I think that there was a, an ability to challenge this. So many summoners are down on Damwon. Karzi has everything. Kaiser has everything. You could TP in Armut, and you could potentially deny that. If they group up in the pit, MF ulti can roast them, but Mad perhaps showing that much confidence in their ability to scale, in their ability to win out in the 5v5s. I think that Mad thinks this is our last chance. We have yeah. one more fight left to determine this game. And I think that you're right in that they look at this and they say, we outscale, we outscale. Let's not give them a 4v5. Let's not bother risking it. Yeah, we'll be down a Baron, but the gold at this point doesn't really matter. And so instead what we'll do is when they have the Baron and they're looking to siege, that's when we'll try and catch them off guard and force a fight. Because Armour doesn't have Flash right now and their ability to get onto the backline is much weaker. But I thought what was great was they demonstrated how you deal with that flank exactly. perfectly. And they just attacked Armour immediately in the 1v1, preventing him from finding that flank Yep, it was the inverse situation of the con flank last game, but this time, Dom Juan knew what to do. They did mark him. My question here is, oh, oh my god, he spotted. They Can they actually yeah. stop him? He's trying to get the recall off, but they stop him in oh, his tracks. Bad. And as you say, that's very bad. He dodges the skewer, but you can't dodge death. And now it, the push is on. You have Ziggs and Baron. Notice how they actually drop pink wards in the brush there. They're trying to cover all their bases to block any sort of a TP flank that could come in from Arma. They're sweeping out the area. They're checking with the Umble Glaive. They're dropping pinks. They know in a 5v4, if Arma cannot get a flank, you will not lose the fight. Arma looking to go in. Bella with a the pull back there, Arma. It's on the clone. Cannon minions Wave survive. So good though. As you say, humanoid with that death ray is gonna be able to clear this out pretty quickly. Khan trying to baron but the minions, but already Kazi is able to take the cannon down in the mid lane. Darmon Kia forced back for the moment. Hope to wait for the waves. It's Skewer. Beryl hits it onto Elioya. Body slams away. Kazi steps through the gate and eats a shot blast that went through a gate of its own. Darmon Kia forced away. One minute on the Baron buff, but Darmon Kia run for their fountain once again. I mean, they're stalling out. They're running out of ways to actually advance the game state. Mad are hitting these critical item spikes. You know, it's full build on Karzi. We're quickly approaching that for Humanoid. Their two carries are so powerful now that yes, it's 7,000 gold in the lead. Look for a flank here. He's got to be careful. Well, his I mean, whole team is not there. Because yeah. so. you know, he did this before. He did this in LEC playoffs where yeah, when the Infernal in Soul rush. was available, you hide in yeah. the bush and then you look for the uh, engage. And I was worried for a second that Beryl would spot him out. Kaiser was able to get away from it. So Azale, we'll come back to you as I apologize for interrupting you. No, no, not at all. I mean, it, it's going to come down to the Infernal Soul. Don Juan, it feels like at this point, is needing it to just even advance the game state, to put their poke over the edge where you use the Jace, you use the Ziggs, you have so much poke that potentially Mad can't just wave clear. And, and look at this, Barrel is actually being so smart. He's constantly hunting for vision, sweeping out all these areas, making sure that there's never wards behind him. It's such a small thing, but that is game changing. And I just love how Dom Juan prepares for their push. Can you see if you can uh, enhance the minimap for us? I will try, but it hasn't been working for me. Yeah, here yeah, we go. We so we'll have a look. And you can just see all this vision around the bot side of the jungle because they are very clearly setting up for control around this dragon. They're keeping the bot wave push. They're keeping the top wave push. Armor and Khan have found each other, but not much action is going to happen off the back of it. But Khan will continue to do this. He will hunt Armut. Armut is his mark, and he will do everything in his power to prevent him from getting in the fight. As he should. And they're trying to just deny vision here, make them check in. But look at Elioya. He's behind him, but he's been spotted. Bone Skewer will pull him back. Alioya tries to flash away, but he is stunned up oh. and he is dead. Kaiser's gonna get the charm onto the back line as Showmaker dies as well. Jungle up in mid right now. Khan trying to get him from the side, but he's cycloned up by Armut. Khan still putting the damage down, but he just can't get enough in. He will, in the end, kill off Armut. 3v4 now in favor of Darmwon Kia. Advancing, pushing forward towards Mad Lions as they Barrel's try on the retreat. flank. But the flank is here, and Beryl has the death from below. And perhaps the X will mark. The death of Mad Lions, Canyon in the pit. Infernal Soul on the menu for Darmon if they can get it, but Humanoid still very healthy. Look at the still patience. Tons of mana. Canyon secures the Infernal. Darmon Kia trying to survive. Barrel stuns up Kaiser there. Car pops a stopwatch. Ghost on a rampage. Putting the damage down onto Kazi as well, who still has the GA. Beryl, though, able to shut down Humanoid. And although Kazi survives, he will watch and die as Dam One Kia clean up the fight. Dam One are just way too good at team fighting. 
Canyon will die for the first time in this game, but he will secure the soul. And it is El Yoya who tries to find the flank, gets one shot at the start of this fight. Kaiser tries to go in to get something back, and Humanoid and Kazi both commit everything that they have to getting that kill. Armored is split from the rest of the team, and then Mad find themselves in a three versus four. But you had to think with Humanoid. Oh, they're going for the end here, El Yoya! Showmaker just does so much damage. El Yoya is down. Armor next up. Darmon Kier able to take down the inhibitor and they are looking for the end, as you say, Azale. Undefeated, 9 and 0. Oh. Darmon Kier in the pursuit of perfection. They are found worthy once again. And they will fight T1 in semis. Just an incredible performance from Darmon throughout. You know, if you were going to criticize them in any game, this was the game that you criticized them for. But even then, you get to see so many impressive things from them. Just the patience that they continuously show in their team fighting, the way in which they execute upon their compositions, and the versatility that they continue to showcase. They are heavy favorites for the World Championship. And I think that Mad, they put up a valiant effort. And it is a shame that we didn't get another game because I felt like that people are going to remember the scoreline yeah. and not how competitive games two and three were when it came to these fights. But Down One was definitely the better team in this series. Absolutely. I mean, Down One played an incredible series. This is this is one of the most, you know, back to back to back impressive series I've, I've ever seen from anyone out of Canyon. I think he was yeah. stellar start to finish. It's hard to find anything to criticize about his Lee Sin play in this series. He was just immaculate. I think the thing about it is, as well, is we didn't just see him dominate all game every game. The yeah. game two, where he came from behind when Ayoya was one and a half thousand gold ahead of the 15 minute mark, to then be able to fight from that position is what makes this series so impressive to me. And on the other side, I completely agree with you, Betty. You know, it is a 3-0, but game two was, was truly like one decision away from a Mad Lions win. Game three was them clawing back, utilizing the scaling, a really impressive performance out of Karzi and Humanoid as those late game characters to almost pull it back. You saw the openings, you saw the opportunities. If it wasn't for that barrel pick onto El Yoya right before that final fight, I mean, that came down to the wire. It was a, a very close game in the end, but Dom won. They just showed the gap between them and could very well be the gap between them and everyone else in the competition. They have looked very, very impressive and just, it's just the way in which they come back into games as well. The way they team fight is, is ridiculous. Yeah. It is so, so impressive to watch. And obviously, as a European, it is heartbreaking to see Mad Lions fall short here in the quarterfinals, but they were up against a Titan, and I think that many considered them the underdogs, and I think that they definitely showed a valiant fight against the current reigning world champions. Yeah, for me, Mad Lions, if you want to be a legend, you've got to fight the legends, and today they put up a good fight against some up-and-coming legends in the League of Legends scene. You know, Damwon Kia probably the best team at Worlds definitely were last year and starting to make a name for themselves as perhaps one of the best teams of all time if they can continue the run that they're currently on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Damwon is, is without a doubt looking the best out of anyone at Worlds so far. Uh, whether or not that, that remains the case is, is going to yeah, be really that exciting. T1 because series is going to be so good. T1. I mean, it's one, so yeah. hype, man. Yeah. Like all the history there between <laughs> between these two orgs, you know, trying to move forward. Damwon has ran the LCK over the last couple of years, but T1 is looking damn good at Worlds and pushed them in the LCK finals in summer. They really did. Now, Arcane Riot's first animated series is coming to Netflix November 6th. Set in the utopian region of Piltover and the oppressed underground of Zorn, the story follows the origins of two iconic League champions and the power that will tear them apart. Let's check out the brand new trailer as we head into the